Hi guys, it's John at the Scale Reviver channel. Um, first and foremost, as always, just want to say a big thank you to all the supporters of the channel so far. Uh, anybody who's commented, uh, subbed already, liked the videos, it's greatly appreciated as always. Any, any uh, new friends to the channel, you know, pl please uh, stick around, watch the video, watch some old videos and, you know... Please press that sub button if, if you would, you know, it really does help us out a, a great deal here. Um, don't really ask for, for much else. Um, you know, we just try and get the, get to the bench as much as we can and and show you what we're on with. But um, yeah, this, this video is going to be a little bit different. Um, I was literally just looking for a magazine. Um, I don't keep many old magazines at all. You know, I've got a big stack of old magazines I need to sort through, but... Yeah, the, the ones which are in this box are just, you know, I've kept it for a, a certain reason. And, and this one here, this was just, just this just had some show coverage of um, the last model car uh, competition I entered in 1997. Um, I was still in my last year to qualify as a junior. Um, but yeah, we'll get into that one more because that was the whole reason I put, went into this box in the first place. But... Yeah, there were, once I started going through it, there were some other other little bits and pieces, you know, this um you know certain things which shaped my my outlook on the hobby from a very early age and um some photos of a an old breakers, an American car breakers, um which was in Barnsley, Yorkshire, so not far from York from us. Um, long gone now, uh, there, there weren't many pictures, I couldn't find many pictures at all on the internet over it, because it, I think it would pretty much been annihilated before before the age of the internet really kicked on, but yeah, I thought we'd just have a have a look through and, you know, I'll take this box off here and like I say, we'll just have a look through, we aren't going to go through the full box, I mean, I don't think you, there's some things in there like me, uh, memorials to me uh, grand's funeral I'm, I'm pretty sure you don't want that cheering you up for the rest of the day but um yeah i mean if like I say because there's some model related stuff some non-model related stuff we'll put a couple of old boxes in background so you you're still looking at models of a of some kind but yeah i mean um so this is I bought this magazine in 1990. Um, so I was 10 years old. I'm pretty sure it's spring, spring 1990. That's what it says on the side of the thing, anyway. So yeah, spring could mean any time in the UK. Really, it doesn't really matter what time it is. But I'd, I'd say sort of this was a a bi monthly bi monthly um, magazine and. Still about today's classic American, I think. Um, but yeah, I remember uh, going to local news agents, and first thing that caught my eye was yeah, I was really into '59 Cadillacs at at ten years old, and I just thought that was the, the best looking Cadillac I've ever seen. Um, obviously, my tastes have changed a lot now, but yeah, I thought that was. I mean, that wanted me, me to buy the magazine straight away, but. Yeah, I think that car's still about, to be quite honest with you. I've seen it rattling about on Facebook pages. But, yeah, what really caught my eye was was this article here about um, a hobbyist in the UK, a chap called Colin Turner, I think he's moved abroad now. Um, but, yeah, 10 years old, we didn't really have the exposure to the internet. Um, I remember my dad talking to me about, or telling me about all the old kits he had, and you know I'd never really seen, or be expo being exposed to such an extent of actually seeing these kits at such an early age. And this guy had a, such a such a brilliant collection. I mean, when you think about it, in 1990, you got six, seven. So these kits are only like 23 years old, but because of the lack of the internet, you know these. You'd buy a kit, you'd get a kit released in 1985 and a couple of years later is classified as, as rare because, you know, the internet wasn't there and all them, yeah, people didn't have the exposure to, to sell kits. And 
So really, in modern day terms, this is really like us looking at a load of late nineties NASCARs and stuff like that. So, but yeah, I mean, um, I remember looking at this magazine, and you know, you sort of see all the all this box art which you'd never seen before, all the annual, um, all the annual uh, early sixties kits on top, and going into the late later sixties kits, and you know the the big run of MPC kits down here, uh, more AMT stuff on the side, and yeah, I remember I remember spending hours with my dad's magnifying glass, just looking at all. All these, seeing seeing if I could hide it, even the ones which are blurred in the in the back corners, just looking round and you know I think I found Car Kits International. Uh, there was really two, I would say, two main dealers of uh, classic of old vintage kits uh, that I remember anyway. There was the Cabin, the Cabin at South End, and oh no, Cabin was uh, Essex uh, somewhere and. But Car Kits International, Bob Dobinson, you know, he was the the chap who I'd really um, got to know well. Spoke to him for hours on phone as a, you know, as a, a teenager, you know, he, he taught me about all these, like, I used to look at these and sort of quiz him saying, you know, have you ever seen one of these kits? And, yeah, really great bloke. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping he's still about. Obviously, I think the... Unfortunately, I think the internet probably killed off his business a little bit, or he just went into retirement. Yeah, I just found that was the time to to give it all up and what have you. But um, yeah, like I say, hope, hope uh, Bob's doing well at the old car kits. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was um, it was such a inspiration to me, and it almost changed from me wanting to just build model cars and knock them together to to actually collecting and trying to find these old kits and over the years I've had many of them probably sold many of them you know I've still got quite a few of these you know the these MPC kits were very my era or the ones which came out and then were, were, you couldn't get hold of uh, because you were too young to buy them at the time and by the time you could afford them they were, they were too expensive or you just you just couldn't find them anywhere but yeah, I mean, um, I think the only problem with this article was there wasn't enough pages on it. So you, you were always wondering what was behind these shots and in the other corners and what have you. But yeah, I mean, it got me into collecting. It got me into buying and selling at an early age or trading. I remember trading a lot with the with the cabin. I uh, didn't really get too many good deals um, from there. But, you know, he, he had some nice kits I liked and... You know, we did a bit of business, even at, when I was young. I think I lied about my age to the to the news agents when I was 11. I should have been 13. And I'm you know, obviously not going to name that news agents. But, yeah, that was just to get some extra cash in my back pocket. I used to trundle around a big, um, a big uh, sack of newspapers on a, on a trolley on a Sunday morning to... I'll pay for some of some kits when which I really wanted, but yeah, it, it goes through some of his stuff. Um, the all his all his imperial collection. I mean, I've got the sixty six. I think I've got the sixty three hard top. I've got the sixty four, but in a in the box art where the car's pink on the top on the sides. I don't know if you have that same one or not, but yeah, I had a lot of them. Um, and they just showed this display cabinet again. You just wanted to see more what was in there, but just really nice, clean builds of old, old vintage kits and what have you. And I think he was painting parts for Joanne seventy two uh, stock car on that one. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was just such a. I came across this, and like I say, it's it, it did really change my outlook on the hobby from. You know, it's kind of moulded me into who I am today. And, you know, I still do, obviously, buying and selling to help pay the rent and stuff like that and my bills and help me through this uh, period of my life, which we're still, we're still dealing with at the moment. But, um, yeah, I mean, it was, I thought that was quite a nice nice thing to look at. Um, 
you know if you ever see one of these magazines on ebay it's worth a, a couple of quid just to get it for that article really interesting article i think it's by richard coney um i, I also think he'd done some the model pages in this one as well so um yeah and another thing you know as a as a kid one of things me yeah we didn't really go away much um weren't yeah, we'd, we'd go to like the certain seaside resorts, different seaside resorts, but we didn't go abroad or anything, but I won't complain. Um, but my dad used to take us to a lot of breakers um, as something to do on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon. Um, drive some local breaker jars, which had classic cars in, because really, you know, that's, that's the only time we got to see him. Um, but yeah, I mean, this was a an old um, break uh, American breakers in Barnsley, uh, all American parts, I think they were called. Um, the the chap who owned it name slips my name right now, but um, yeah, I don't think he had the best reputation for dealing with people. But you know, to to see something like like this place in person, I mean, it was it was always somewhere i wanted to go when i passed my driving test but by the time i trust passed my driving test it, it it sold the land for sold the land for a few million i bet and um i think before he, he cleared the yard he had a price tag on of a thousand pound on each car to to save them from the crusher but i can't imagine they, they, they were also absolutely rotten by the time that happened, I don't think many got saved from there, but, you know, there was a, a lot of nice old cars, I think this was looking in the front gate, um, had an old 70s Camaro there, and, uh, you know, we're going to show you, show you these as best I can, some of them are blurry, you know, we, we, we don't want this video too long, but, you know, people who are from the area or from the UK, and we don't, we didn't get a lot of American breakers in the UK, you know, some quite interesting stuff just look, looking through the front gate you know we had a i think that was a 60 69 um torino up top and a front end of a 55 chevy sticking out there and i think that was like a a late 60s cougar yeah just as the same shot but you know i think the thing with this place is even when before they put the barriers up um because cars were falling through the fences um you know you were just trying to poke your way through gaps in fences to see what there was but yeah i think this was just like to the side of the yard uh to the side of that camaro um yeah he had a stack of mustangs at the side and yeah an old i assume that was an 80s station wagon and i i think that was a what was left of a um an old Ford Pinto or something like that. Um, like I so, try not to spend too much because we have got a few photos in here. But yeah, this was after they put the old fence. After they put the new fence up, um, I think he was ordered to do that probably by local council. But yeah, we got a couple of '56 Chevys up there, a Renault Dauphine, and what have you. Like I say, I mean, there's only so much you can see on, on a photo, especially, you know, we were using old cameras at the time and which are difficult to focus and you would, like say, you're getting through gaps. Uh, like that was just the only gap you could get through to to see the corner of that 70s Cadillac. Um, just another blurry photo. I don't know why I kept ones like this. I think it was just because I knew what I was trying to take a picture of or... We were trying to take a picture of and I think there was some old 56 Crown Victorias behind there, but yeah, just another, just a bit of a close picture of that Renault Dauphine just sticking up there. An old Dodge fan, I think this was like the scrap pile. Um, it was you could see you could see a lot of really nice stuff in this scrap pile, 50s and 60s cars, and they were just all thrown on top of each other but again you really couldn't get get close enough for the angle i think this was a quarter panel to an old ford 50s ford or something um 50 
seven Ford, I think it was, four door. Um, but yeah, I just always remember that old Dodge van rotting away and sitting on top of it, sitting on top of that pile. Yeah, another shot before they got the before they got the fences all fixed and what have you. It's um, looking down. I think it was it went round the corner. Um, I think this was stood on the corner, and I think that was like a a late fifties Mercury maybe or something, and with a um, late thirties, early forties Ford, and uh, not Ford, but some kind of vintage car, and you know, an old seventies Mustang stuck on top of some shipping crates, and you know, the fifty fifty nine Ford just falling into the into the uh you know these were quite tall walls so I, I bet these were five or six cars piled five six cars high and an old studebaker commander there and i never knew what that that station wagon was it it could have been it could have been like a volkswagen station wagon but it always looked like a rambler or something small small like that but yeah always like that that 59 ford um yeah, that's uh, again when they got the fences up. That's the, the front of that Studi Studebaker Commander, and I think that was sitting on top of a '56 Chevy. Um, that was that little station wagon on top of a early '60s Valiant, and um, yeah, that old '70s Mustang at the top there, and I think just uh, moving across. I'm just trying to remember what was there. I think that was like a. A, a potentially like a, a Studebaker um, a Studebaker station wagon or Studebaker commander or something and then you got a 55 Chevy there with something else just thrown on top of it but um, yeah I think uh, like some of these it's really hard to tell we just got a, a 55 uh, tail, tail end there and yeah, the top of the that red '56 Chevy, and I think that was a, I think that in the corner was a, an old Cougar or a, a early '70s Buick. Um, like I say, I know I know these this this video might be long, but somebody might be interested in seeing some of these. Like I said, there's not a not a lot out there on the internet on this yard, and I thought it'd be good to share the best we can with some old Polaroids. But yeah, we got an old. Uh, like 69, 70, 70 Oldsmobile, uh, later model station wagon. Um, yeah, just a different angle of them 256 Chevys there. I think this was round on the main side of Smith's Road. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, that, the, the name of the owner's completely, completely... Uh, completely lost me but i'll put it in thumbnail anyway I'll, I'll remember it by then but yeah just got another another cougar um i think there was quite a lot of mustangs around here to be quite honest i remember and i remember there being a stack of old uh, late 60s early 70s mustangs i did see one that got saved in a magazine and it was literally falling falling down on itself you know the quarter panels were pretty much falling over the inner well wells and stuff like that but yeah nice front end of a 55 um chevy i mean it was it was like i say really gutted that i didn't actually get to see this in my adult life but when my dad took us it was either closed or the, the guy certainly wouldn't let kids on site which is fully understandable like so uh, i mean i don't think it was that well organized and i can imagine there being a lot of places you can bail yourself on there but yeah that was a on this was a down the side and um this was a 57 four door four door chevy yeah a bit of a further way blurry picture of it again but you know there was a lot of, a lot of nice 50s stuff um yeah this is probably one of my favorite pictures of before they took the took that um repaired all the fencing and but yeah you got the um 
Yeah, I still don't know what that that station wagon is. It's definitely not a, a Volkswagen. It'll be it'll be something American, but I just can't put a name to it right now. I wouldn't for um, unless it's an old course in uh, No, I don't know. I have no idea what that thing is. But yeah, that Studi Baker was just literally ready to fall down over the over the wall onto the onto the road, the embankment and the, the road below and. Um, it's just like crushing itself into a 56 Chevy. You got a 57 or a 58 Plymouth there um, on top of a 58 Chevy. Um, so these were quite quite rare rare cars for the UK. And yeah, I think um, yeah the story was that you know obviously all the servicemen were over, who were over here. You know bought cars over didn't didn't bother bringing them back and. Uh, a lot ended up at yards like this. I don't think there's many yards still about. Um, I did see on the bearded explorer in the last 12 months. Maybe he visited a a very similar yard um, with hundreds of American classic cars. I would absolutely love to to know where that is and have a have a hunt round it myself and take a few pictures. But you know, I think with a, a lot of his videos, he's obviously not exposing. Where those are because you don't, yeah, you know, yeah. Those cars, you know, they don't need stealing or anything like that. So, but yeah, that was a bit of a close up of that '59 Chevy, and I think he was sitting on top. That 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 old one was sitting on top of like a probably like a, a early '50s Chevy Bolero or something like that, and a bit of a later model station wagon and. You know, and that was the, the corner of that 57, 59 Ford just sticking up there. It's, you know, there was only so many, so many pictures you could get. Like, you know, it was, um, you know, the the embankments were really too tall for, for kids to walk up and what have you. But, you know, it's, um, yeah, I think that's like uh, an old, old, another old Studi Baker there. Um, probably like an early American or something. And, yeah, the a fifty six and a, a fifty five, just rotting away up there. Again, I think that was that. I was trying, still trying to get a picture of um, wherever they were behind the behind the fence. But yeah, I mean, we're starting to see the same cars again. Like, but like I said, there was only only so many angles you could you could get to to have a look at these, and just thought it'd be interesting to like I was looking for them and. Yeah, reminiscing and yeah, like I say, my dad used to take us to all kinds of uh, classic car breakers, and sometimes you're allowed in, sometimes you wouldn't. Um, sometimes you got to see more than than others, but yeah, it looks like a early early sixties uh, Dodge or yeah, an early sixties Dodge Dart maybe with a half canvas roof and what have you. Just more pictures of that, and like I say, that was a another one, another early picture where they were just all falling through, and you know, that's potentially like a a seventies Buick or I don't know, it could be an early a mid seventies Torino or something. But yeah, I mean, we, we like I said, I think these are a bit more blurry from the from the from the main gate. You know, you could see that Cougar just literally dropping its uh, send over some other that looks potentially like an old 70, a, a 70 Impala 69 Impala or something but yeah there was a uh, a few nice cars in there obviously got lost I think these are just other places we went I remember this was Kazam Cars in Castleford uh, American car sales I think we nearly bought a Cadillac Bustle back from from there um and the and the Ford Fairmont, uh, remember the nineteen eighty Ford Fairmont, seventy nine Ford Fairmont, but I think we never, they they never came together like so. Um, yeah, this is in the old Wood Green. I used to visit me relatives, uh, my dad's side. They're all from Edmonton, and this was the the Wood Green um, car park where these two old cars were just. Just dumped in there for years. Obviously, probably been towed a long time ago. But an old, an old Opal 
record, I think it is, or something like an Oakville Olympia record, and that was my mum's car. I don't, I don't even remember know these ones were in back of here, but we were able looking through it, might as well have a look through them, and I think that was my eldest brother in his little car, but yeah, I think that was my mum's old Austin, or Morris, whatever you call him. Austin pre later, probably been raced on the track by now. Yeah, I remember this thing, this was just around me, um, around me nans and me aunts streets, uh, another another car dumped in that wood green shopping centre car park. Yeah, this is how old it was, you know, that was probably a relatively new car, that, that Mark um, 1 Fiesta there, or is it Mark, no, yeah, Mark 1 or Mark 2, yeah, Mark 1 Fiesta. Another couple of shots of that limousine, thought that was the greatest thing ever when I was a kid, and, uh, we just used to walk around my nan's house, around my nan's area, and you'd just see these old cars still scattered about. This would have been in the mid-80s, early to mid-80s, I would have thought. So, yeah, it wasn't uncommon just to to find a yeah, couple of streets at a time. You'd maybe find something in a, in a driveway, and, yeah, this was a, a Volvo I saw. I potentially think this was in York. To be fair, you know, that was, um, yeah, I think uh, that was a Volvo, some Amazon, somebody started customising and what have you. Be interested to see what where that car is today. And, um, yeah, I did an old Mark II Zephyr my dad had bought to restore, and I think all he, as far as he got with it, was a uh, drawing a, a picture of it with massive wheels on just to and they stuck it in this window just to annoy the neighbor because i don't think we got one with neighbors too well um back then but yeah i think it didn't really get much further than that and yeah i think uh and i was uh just in background that was the appetite victor we had I, i'm pretty sure unfortunately that one ended up getting raced after me dad sold it um not too sure um but yeah, an old FB, FB Victor, I think that was on, in London again. That was the uh, Mark II Zephyr. We've, uh, me, as a very young child, sat in the sat in the driver's seat. Never, I can't remember who that, that uh, Cortina pickup belonged to. But yeah, we still live on live on this street now, like, oh, my mum my, my and dad still lives on that street now. Um, so to speak, and yeah, that was me dad's me dad's old Victor like, and it was a really solid car. It just never got restored the way he wanted it, and that was our old um, told the Amazon. Um, my dad's F, yeah, my dad's um, my dad's uh, old SD one didn't keep that one long. I don't think. Um, yeah, he didn't keep that one long at all. I think that was one car he wanted him to keep and it, it never stuck around. And Yeah, just another one of that. So, yeah, I thought they were they were quite interesting things to look at. We're at half an hour now. Um probably won't get time to to look at much more in that in that box and but yeah, there was a few things in there. Um I'll just grab what's in the bottom of the box and we'll we'll skip what in which we don't, yeah, we don't need to look at how to play the seahorses on the uh, on guitar. Um, don't really need to, yeah. But I was, um, yeah, people who know me know I've got a massive love of um, the thirty eight seven series. Uh, probably had fourteen, fifteen really rare ones in me in me time, and uh, yeah, that was uh, another period of my life. I'm, I'm just, I just bought a. And I left my job, obviously didn't have a company car anymore and so I was looking for something I'd sold all my thirty eights, um I'd, I'd restored one. Um it was a car I've had the longest fourteen years and absolutely loved the car. It was, it was like a part of the family and the one thing I, I I you know, I just kept tightening it up over year and year and then it sat for like three years and the only thing I wanted to ever do to it was um make it mint so we had full panel off respray we replaced everything on it and the problem with that car is that i just made it too nice i made it too nice to drive i made it too nice to park on the street where i live you know i've got um 
trees overhanging anything and yeah the biggest regret of my life selling that car you know I, I, I haven't seen it for you I think I sold it the September before Covid it in you know there were certain things going on there and I, I, I just knew I couldn't look after the car I couldn't store it anywhere and you know trying to do something nice to the car it just kind of backfired a little bit on me and I sold it to a really lovely bloke, you know, it's got, it, it went into a, a nice private collection, you know, the car's still about, I, I, first time I'd seen it was um, on a Facebook page, it was about a month ago, you know, um, and I will, if, if I ever see that car come up for, come up for sale, you know, I will, um, I would like to buy it back, um, I, yeah, when I, like say, when I left my job, I, the, the market on them is just stupid at the moment. People want far too much money for cars which need far too much work. So I wanted something ec economical and reliable. So I got a BMW 745LI, the long wheelbase one with 21 inch alloy wheels, you know, so you couldn't really get as far from economical or reliable. Um, but my justification was with that was it was, um, it had, uh, it has the long wheelbase, extra 12 inch stretch in back and I could fit more model kits in there if I ever bought a collection or something so uh, just can't afford to put petrol in it to, to take it to them, that's the only thing at the moment so uh, lovely car, you know, it, it's becoming getting attached to that one now as well to be fair but yeah I just thought, found these in there, these were just old doodles I did We'll just flick through them, to be quite honest, you know, there's nothing to do. They're all done, they're just doodles, which took me 20 minutes, and just did them on lime paper and stuff, so... But I just thought, wow, they're in there, they're quite... It's quite interesting for me to have a look on, back on these. I probably would have been in my teens when I'd done these, and I think that looks like I was trying to resemble something like a, a Rambler station wagon. Obviously, the inspiration from going round breakers yards was quite heavy, as you'll see in these, some weird... Morris Minor Stroke Austin station wagon thing in a 59-57 Chevy I painted up and I uh, painted up just doodled up and what have you I mean none of them are mint or anything there but I just thought while well, we're looking through that box of memories we'll have a look at some of these and yeah I think that was a Mark II Zodiac or Zephyr I was uh, drawing and you know, there's loads, loads wrong with them and what have you, and it was just a literally, I'd just sit there and I'd just literally scribble for for twenty minutes to kill some boredom. Or but yeah, I don't know what that that was supposed to look like. Maybe a early early forties Chevy or Plymouth or something. That old stock car, early thirties Ford stock car. I would have thought I was going for on that one or. Maybe something British, but you know, it's uh, yeah, I um, really don't know what I was trying to do with this look with a 55 Chevy. I think there's an axle stand on there, and I think, uh, yeah, it looks like the old cars collapse around the axle stand. But old 63 Galaxy, I think, was what I was going for on that one, and the old tow truck, and about the bed, and what have you, about the wrecker bed, and. Another very narrow looking 55 Chevy with some weird fins on it. Um, a very quirky looking Ford Mustang maybe I was going for on that one. Looks a bit like the proportions of the body on that monogram 69 Camaro a little bit. Never really been into motorbikes. Uh, I don't know what got me into to drawing an old motorbike. Maybe I was getting bored of drawing cars I suppose but yeah I think um yeah 44 39 40 Ford coupe with some weird rear end going on I think I was still looks a bit Chevy or Plymouth that end and I think this is a drawing I did of um you know we had that Victor in the in the uh in the garage for many years and yeah you know, if I had it that's probably what something I would have done to it just giving it a gentle roof chop and some light cups, custom touches really nice car them things so they're a little bit narrow like I thought you know you don't get the, the overall proportions of a, an American car they're, 
the styling was very American, but obviously for the for the British market, everything was everything was much smaller. Um, yeah, some some weird pickup um, with an Alicart inspired grill. It looks like, and yeah, I think everybody's done a drawing of a of a weird creature in a in a hot rod, haven't we? So, uh, yeah, I think that was just something I have like some of these things. I don't know if the paper does like what's been at them, but yeah, some of them are literally dropping to pieces. Uh, yeah, just another quick quick sketch of a Matsu Zodiac, and I don't, know, I don't even realise I had this much stuff in here. So I'm, I apologise, you know. It's uh, yeah, I'm just looking through this box with you, to be quite honest with you, and like I say, I didn't take any of these out of that folder, and I'm just having a look at a few of these things now, it looks like a 64 Dodge, um, NASCAR, going up against a side rail or something, it's, uh, and then obviously I was doing a few stock cars, yeah, it looks like a Pontiac, potentially, it looks like a Pontiac Ventura front end or something like that, that front end, but yeah, I think um, I don't think there's much else in there to be quite honest with you. I don't think you want to see any invoices or anything or anything like that. So uh, yeah, I think um, nice little chops, chop model T. I actually built a model of yeah. I drew this and then I I, I built a model of this um, or as close as I could get to it. I did it with an AMT. AMT um, 49 Mercury. And I did a, a fog paint job. I think it was gold, and I with a and then I just reworked the original hard top roof and make a Carson top out of it. I think I've still got it. Like I think it just glued some bumpers on. I think the glum, some of the bumpers might have fallen off or something. But yeah, I did. I actually built a model car after I, in later years and of that of that sketch that idea I had in my mind and. It's a weird Volkswagen of some some description with some really weird looking vents going on around there and must have been okay yeah must have been uh, feeling posh on online paper but yeah it hadn't really lasted well uh, just dropping dropping to pieces but yeah like I say I thought it'd, it'd be nice just to show some of these and like I say just go through that box I've, I've not been through that box in a in a while to be quite honest with you I, I knew I knew the two magazines what were in there but I forgot all about stuff like this uh, yeah it looks like a front end of a front end of a Zodiac and uh, next to some essentially like a maybe a 36 4 but it looks like a 36 Ford hybrid with a 33 Willys Coupe or something like that, but yeah, just a, another 49 Ford or a custom version. It looks like I've put Buick Buick um, Roadmaster style uh, fence inside. I don't even know what they've got this in for. Oh, yeah. Now, is it the old job? You know, um, this when was this? This was two thousand seventeen. So in York we have um, a hill called Micklegate, um, cobbled cobbled hill, and um, yeah, we we sponsored, we sponsored they uh, to bring tourists in. You know, we did a Micklegate run. It was a soapbox challenge kind of thing, and our company sponsored. Um, also on spon sponsored the uh, the the Micklegate run and we I think the first one I built the first thing I built it was a real rush job and we did um, a Tron bike and I want the driver in that I didn't want to drive it I just wanted to build it and it was such a terrible looking thing but yeah I don't think we did too well in that I think the wheels snapped off on the on the on the jump but this hill I mean it was a tall hill but then they built this huge ramp I mean to see it, it was like literally the gradient was down like that and this is the the first year I built this um this green hornet replica and 
oh, replica is uh, made out of wood and had a big steel frame inside it. It was, it was all, it was, I think they've still got it. I mean, I, I did say if you ever get rid of it, let me know because, you know, I put a lot of time and effort into that. But that was me at the top of me, top of the, top of the hill. And this was the first run on on the second year. And so it's the first time I'd actually sat in this. And as a participant, you had to be there at like half past seven. But on a bank holiday Sunday or Monday, whenever it was, you know, there's nothing much else to do while you're out hanging around except drinks. So I think by the time we took this at... This picture was taken at like half 10, 11 in the morning. I was pretty much half cut. But I was in the days where I could drink and yeah, I don't really do much of that anymore to be quite honest. But yeah, that was a great day. That was some that was, uh, good memories of that company to be quite fair with you, you know, before before things happened. And so yeah, that was, uh, yeah, like I say, a good memory was that, you know, we did it for the second year. Um, somebody took a brilliant shot yeah we went down the hill and at the bottom of the hill was this little wooden ramp and somebody took a, a brilliant shot of this me jumping with this and we had uh, the, the green uh, smoke bombs coming out of the back but it was completely level over like in the middle of the air absolutely fantastic photography whoever did that i think i've still got that picture somewhere i don't know where but yeah that was just uh like i say i've, I've gassed on for 40, 41 minutes now, 41, you know, going up to 42 minutes and yeah, you've not seen really any model cars, you've not seen much of anything except for some blurry old photos and there you go, there's another model car for you to, to end the thing. Uh, funnily enough though, these are, <laughs> these are in that magazine, so I remember seeing these on the in that magazine on the on the wall that um collection and i, I made it me thing to i i could just see the side box i always remember asking bob you know what's that what's that black box 50 ford with the red red one i don't think i ever bought one any of these from him i don't think he ever got any in but you know i was just like trying to describe boxes you know you couldn't send a picture for a phone or anything so uh, yeah i thought I'd... these are great box arts for yeah, the, I think there's 61, 62 releases or something like right around about that era. Maybe maybe 60 up to 64, I don't know. I'm not too sure. But yeah, there you go. So like I say, a bit of a different video. Um, just me going through, like I say, uh, literally a box of my, my memories and talking through a few things I used to do when I was younger and what have you and, and some things in more in my recent years. And now I'll just pack it all away into a into another box and um yeah pack it away into into the box and probably not look at it again for another another 20 years or so um but i will do another video on that uh, on the cars which i put into that competition the one which actually won there's only the, the body is long gone unfortunately i tried to paint the body on it and yeah that was when i was working in a paint shop and one thing I wasn't happy with the colour and the second thing that the spray booth was on too high and with them spinning it was a 55 Rebel 55 Chevy and the, the little lines, the, the rocker panels under the open doors just couldn't take the heat and it buckled up like a pretzel. So, But we have got a project in mind, we've still got the chassis and everything for that and that was the actual contest winner so I do want to do something with that to, to get it back on the shelf or at least in a built built state so yeah 43 minutes done well done well of gassing on and boring you to death so there you go uh more model cars um but yeah i mean thanks for watching if you if you if you stuck around for this you know like i say it's a bit it's a bit off the model car sort of thing we usually do but you know somebody might find it interesting and you know even if them bring back a few memories for for people who remember that yard it was um god i, I just don't know why i can't can't think of his name off the top of my head you know i've, I've known it for for years and then when you start talking about it, it completely erases itself from your memory so i'll put it in the description anyway there you go but thanks again for watching uh please like and share and subscribe uh 
have a look have a keep your eye out for any new videos coming coming out we've got more unboxings we still got to finish that 70 convert plymouth four door conversion not too sure if i'm gonna make that deadline to be fair i think i put myself under too much pressure with this one to to get that one finished for you know last day or so it took the fun out of the build so depending where i are i'm on the plymouth as you can see it's not any further on than the last time we t filmed it yeah i'll do my best to meet that deadline but you know if it doesn't make it it doesn't make it and you know i just want to make a nice kit out of it for you guys to 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 see when it's all done so yeah we've got two weeks of that and i ain't gonna be doing any model building today it's the day after i finish this um this container and yeah so there so again i'll shut my face so uh, thanks and see you in the next video see you back